Welcome to my PhD proposal defense presentation, which I gave on August 29, 2016. You can pause this video at any time. I'm just going to highlight some of the moments that you can investigate further. Starting off with the virtual renaissance happening in 2014, I'd like to point out the Van VR link at the bottom. Okay, so Shakespeare and technology. This one's a little harder. <laughs> <laughs> One of the more surprising things that I, that's starting to, become, starting to become clearer to me lately is the connection between Shakespeare and technology. Now, I personally delight in technology. It's great fun and all kinds of wonderful things are possible that weren't possible before. Uh, and for me, I, and, and in considering how we do Shakespeare, I think that's great, as long as we keep doing Shakespeare, but I'll come back to that. One of the surprising things is that this is another point of connection between people today and Shakespeare. We live in a time of tremendous change, huge innovation, technological innovation, where new technologies, the internet, social media, all of that stuff is fundamentally changing our experience of what it means to be human. Well, the surprising thing is that Shakespeare was also in the midst of one of those times. And now the other big innovation that was new at the time was playgoing. And it was all the rage. And it gave people an opportunity to experience life, to experience their humanity that had been unthinkable before that. Yes, of course, there were plays, but they were a completely different kind of thing. They were entirely related to uh, the Bible, really. Um, and this is, of course, in England. Um, and so what happened, especially in London, with the advent of the playhouses and playgoing, is, is suddenly there was a whole new thing. It was the hot ticket. And that commercial enterprise, I think, inspired Shakespeare and his contemporaries in a very powerful way. So suddenly this was a way, uh, this is where all of the brilliant people were because this is where you could make money. And I welcome it and I think it's gonna have uh, it already has started to have, and, and I hope it continues to have a tremendous impact on education. But as far as Shakespeare goes, uh, I embrace all of that, but I want to be a very loud and clear voice saying, yes, technology is great, but it's got nothing on humanity. And so no matter how much cool technology stuff we do with Shakespeare, we have to keep doing Shakespeare, we have to keep playing Shakespeare and using this miraculous technology that we were all born with and that we have in common with Shakespeare. That technology of our bodies and our voices and our imaginations and our hearts. I completely agree with Mary Hartman. This has informed a lot of my research questions, especially the drama education aspect of virtual reality. In addition to Anne Bogart, alongside this wonderful animation of a qubit from the Piled Higher and Deeper YouTube video, we also have Evelyn Tribble, Robert Elrott, and Neil Turek inspiring my research. Of course, a big shout out for the serious gamer James Paul G, who's talking about virtual reality, the imagined technology. One more voice to add is... Oh, this one, he says in England, and he had to. And the reason he had to, well, to get to it, I want to talk about a different author or two. Not Shakespeare for a minute. I want to talk about Arthur Conan Doyle. <laughs> Arthur Conan Doyle, born 1859, dies 1930. He's one of these Victorian authors, Scottish, um, who had demonic energy. The Victorian they would go to work, work like 12 hour days as captains of industry, then they'd go home and they'd write encyclopedias of butterflies, <laughs> or, or they'd design steam engines. And he was one of these guys, he was an athlete, then he was a doctor, he was a ship surgeon, he ran for parliament, he was a spiritualist, an amateur scientist, he was the first licensed ophthalmologist in London, and then in his spare time, <laughs> he wrote stories. He wrote a bunch of stories and none of them got published until in 1886 he wrote a story called A Study in Scarlet, which introduced a new character, Sherlock Holmes. We're really fortunate to have Dr. Paul Boudreau lecture so close to UBC. He's an SFU professor, 
a few more professors, Tom Barone and Elliot Eisner talking about arts-based research, and George Beliveau and Graham Lee's research-based theater. You might recognize the young John Webster from the 1998 movie Shakespeare in Love, and my nephew Nathan, who will possibly grow up and become one of Janet Murray's cyber bards, expanding on Brenda Laurel's computerized theater, which, thanks to Dorothy, William, Deborah, and Carol, brings us to the big name Lev Vygotsky and his social cultural theory. I've got until July 2017 to get to results and recommendations, and a few more months to wrap it all up. A lot of reading that I've included in my presentation can be found in these reference pages, and a lot more will be made available when my dissertation becomes available in February 2018. Thank you for watching.